Hello and welcome to my 11th video. This video is going to be about Docker. It's very hard actually to have a video on a subject that is like very widespread and there are very good videos out there uh, for this technology. I wanted to make something that is short and also something that actually gets you running uh, with Docker if you don't know how to work with it or if you have some uh, previous knowledge with it. I'm not going to take much of your time, but I promise you'll take something away from this one. We are going to write our own Docker file. We are going to execute a new container or even make our own container. Basically install everything that we need inside a container. So let's go. It's going to be a fun journey. Why Docker or why VMs or why these technologies actually happening or like it's out there? Because we want to have a standard environment, standard environment uh, from developer side. So we, you can see here a picture of an AI programming on a computer. That's pretty nice. I didn't know uh, it like they were doing a computation about like 40 or 50 years back. As like the time was passing through, we are having different systems, uh, Windows, Linux, and all of those things. and some program were written in one of them and you wanted to execute to another one. You had the problem that they were not matching. Imagine that even like we are going to have many systems, like different systems, each one of them having different hardware, a big problem in there. So we need something that we can make these systems or environments standard. Uh, the application that developer writes should run on the system without any hiccups. Ansible, Chef, Puppet, all of these configuration uh, technologies are also aiming at the same thing. They want to have a standard system. But none of them are as good as VMs or as successful as VMs and Docker. So what Docker does or VM does, what they want to do is standardize this part. This is like the infinity loop of DevOps or infinite loop of DevOps. So here we have coding, building, testing, releasing, deploying. So everything that goes from coding up to deploying inside the final stage and sometimes operating is being targeted by VMs and do later Docker technology. How Docker works? Pretty simple. Uh, here the host is your machine. After you install your machine, there isn't uh, something in there named daemon. This is the daemon of Docker. It says that Docker desktop is running. So when you want to run the Docker, usually you use some kind of terminal or remote API, but here we are going to use terminal on this machine. So te terminal is going to be your client that basically you are like sending uh, some commands to the daemon or the host of Docker. Inside the host of Docker, we have images. Images can be like Ubuntu's image. And containers are actually images when they are running. There is like a, a word Docker registry that is free and that is Docker Hub. Most of these applications like Ubuntu, like Node.js, Python, all of them are like pushing their images in there. Uh, we have Docker Hub. Also, we have some private Docker registries. Azure, each cloud provider has its own like Azure, IBM. Uh, so what companies do because they don't want to leak their code in Docker Hub, although Docker Hub has private registries, so pr registries are private and public. The private ones are the ones that is like, you don't want to share it with the world and the public ones, they are the ones that you want to share with the world. What happens when you want to like get a, a Ubuntu image, for example, or run an Ubuntu image on your computer, you are going to like ask Docker daemon that you want to run the Ubuntu image. Docker daemon is going to go to the Docker Hub fetch the image of Ubuntu or like put it in here and then fetch it and then run it as a container and you can see it. We are going to see that in about two or three minutes. So Docker registry, this is the world, uh, world's place for pushing the Docker images. And you can see here we have Postgres, Ubuntu, Traffic and Redis and many, many other images. It's like you can see in here 5 million and 400,000 images. That's a lot. You can find almost every image for every need that you have. I'm going to show you how. You are going to first run the hello world container and see what's happening in there. Secondly, we are going to run Ubuntu, install Python in it. Thirdly, we are going to be ambitious. We are going to create our own image. 
And the last one that is the mastery, I call it, you're going to fa mount files and open ports in the container. So you can work completely with Docker as if it's like running in your system. Okay, let's go. So we are here in Docker Hub, the place that you can see the containers or explore them. Uh, let's go and see all official images in here. Ubuntu, Redis. Let's see if we can find the hello world. Yes, here it is the hello world image. Let's go inside. Usually when you go inside to see each of these images like descriptions, you can see the tags, like the tags that they're used, simple tags. For example, latest is like on Linux. And also you have quick references, probably some ways to run it. So here it is, example running it. Let's go and run this one. In this video, I'm going to uh, show you how to even like find the issues, find the commands to run the things that you want to do. Let's go in Docker and run it. Okay, here you can see it says that unable to find the image locally. It's not in my system. So maybe it's better I put up the process in here. Okay, uh, here it is. So the first one, unable to find the image. Okay, so daemon, we ask daemon that you wanna, we want to run hello world image. So the daemon cannot find the hello world image. It's going to ask the Docker hub. And then doc, it's going to fetch and load it in here. Here you, you can see uh, it's going to use the latest tag and going to pull from the library. So it's going to pull it and then it has uh, the digest or like hash code to make sure that the image is like correct. And then it says that downloaded the new image. So here is the time that you can see this one is like in here that is inside the image part. And then it's going to run it like we said just run this one, so it's going to run this part and bring up the image, create the container for it. And you can see here, uh, Docker pulled the image from the Docker hub that's happening. Number three, uh, it says that Docker daemon created a container, here it is, and ran it. And it, Docker daemon streamed out, like got this, you can see in the, in this uh, green line, it streamed out the execution from daemon to our client, that is this terminal. And here it has the next steps for us. Try something more ambitious, sure. Let's copy it and run it. Just before running it, uh, I wanna show you something. Docker run means, means run this image, basically, run this image. Dash IT. Dash IT means interactive and uh, interactive terminal. Uh, and it means that don't close it after you have run it. And then you have bash. Bash is like a program inside the terminal. If you know about Linux, we have like this terminal in here, like this one. This one is ZSH. And we have another uh, flavor to it, and that is bash. We can have different terminals. So let's run it. I had it in my system. So here it is. So LS, we are completely in different operating system. We are in Ubuntu now. Let's go and install Python. So it's like that, exactly like you are working with Ubuntu, uh, but here the system is root, so you don't need to do sudo. So app-get install. Python, not two, but three. Okay, we have Python, three now. Okay, print, hello. Here it is, let's exit from here. Okay, we should do exit like this, okay. And we have Python three, we have pip, there. That's good. But there is a catch to it. When we do this one, now we are outside of the Ubuntu and basically it has closed the, Docker has closed that container. Docker PS, there is no container running. That's unfortunate. So Docker 
images. So we have Ubuntu, but we don't have it in here. Here it is the Ubuntu one. What we can do? Uh, oh, it says four hours ago. I just downloaded it. Anyway. So I don't have anything saved. Basically, if I want to like run the Ubuntu again, I should install everything from the beginning. Something that you don't like to do. Let's go in and create a Docker file. So if you want to create a container, that's easy. Just create a Docker file. Here it is. So the first line should be, okay, you don't need to even like memorize these ones. Let's just search for some sample Docker files. Docker file. Just randomly I picked one. Going to see, okay, here it is. Uh, just going to copy, copy from it. Ubuntu and latest for sure. Uh, the commands for Docker should be like in capital case and everything else should be in our case. And work dir actually tells like which directory you want to work from. For example, here we can say home. It means that everything that you do now, just do it in home. So the next one would be running. If you want to run any command, if you remember what we did is like app-get update and, and apt-get install python3 pip. Anything else you want to have in there. I think that's okay. And yeah, basically that's it. Let's just run these commands. So how you can build it, pretty easy. You can say docker build dot. When you say dot, it knows from where it can create the get the docker file. And let's put a name for it. That is like Python. You should tag it with dash T Python image. It's going to do the same thing that is like pulling the content and it's going to run your here it is, L run your command. This is the previous command and it says that it has failed. Let's see why it failed. Okay, there's a reason that it failed. Do you see in here? I didn't specify dash y. Everything that you put in the Docker file should be in a way that is not going to stop the installation. So here, if you wanna make it like, don't just assume yes for that question. That's it. Okay, it's done. Let's go and see. Docker images. Let's see what images we have. Here it is, our image is here. Let's run it. Docker run dash ti. And it is Python image. And then we want to run bash inside. Here it is. Let's see if we have pip3. Yes, we have it. Okay, running the command there is something that we can do and that is exposing the port nginx we want to install nginx so nginx usually uses port 80 so let's have it there okay why didn't it happen okay now we have it in here Uh, app dash get install nginx. Okay, we have it in here. Curl, let's see if we don't have curl. Uh, dash get install curl. So, curl is something that you can fetch the websites with it. So, let's do curl localhost. Okay, it means that nginx is not running. Let's see if there is service. Okay, starting that one. Curl local host. Yes, Nginx is running in local host in here. Let's see if we can get it in here. Local host 8080. Here we have it. 
Nginx is running. Yes, we are the champions. Okay. Now that you know how to do exposing the ports exactly with this command, it means that this is the port on your computer. This is the port on the machine on the on the container. So this is on your computer. This is on the container. Then you can basically do the job. There is also another thing that I usually do, and that is mounting the file. Here it is how I'm mounting mounting the file. That's a homework for you. That is source. That is the target. Target means on the what on which part in the machine and this is the source means that what part from your computer and the type is bind that's the homework for you to go in and learn about it so i can say with exposing the port and all you have learned in here you have good proficiency in docker congratulations have a great day